All right, we're going to continue our work on our pull request uh, to Alacrity. Uh, I did an initial episode on this. Uh, I'll link it in the description. Go watch it if you want to know where we are at this point. Uh, and in this video, I want to take the next step into making this pull request into a finished state and getting it merged. So I'm not going to go into where we, what we went through in the last episode, so please check it out if you haven't. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, um, but for now we're going to continue with the refactoring. Uh, so one of the things that was uh, proposed was to change some stuff in the implementation that we did. So just a quick reminder. So what we did is uh, support to double click on a on a bracket, and then uh, it auto selects until the closing bracket, and this works for uh, multiple types of brackets. Um, so um, so yeah, so that's what we've been building and um, it works, but the code needs some cleaning up. So that's what we're going to do. So first of all, we've got the mouse input here. And one of the proposals was right now you've got mouse input, which where everything starts. If you do something with the mouse, it starts in this function. And then um, it goes to the press or release state. In those states, it goes to single or double click or triple click as well. And then after that, we still do some stuff here for the double clicking and um, obviously as was pointed out it's kind of all over the place right now um, and so we're going to clean that up a bit and so the proposal was to move to change the order where we start with checking for single double or trickle click and then within those we will do the actual press or release state and so that way we can hopefully condense all the information into a single point a single location and make it more clear what's going on um, so yes yeah, so let's start with that so first of all, let's see. So when the function starts, we match the the, the mouse button that's in, that's passed into the mouse, and this the these variables come from the um, from the operating system itself. The uh, or at least there's there's a layer in between in uh, inside Alacrity. But um, when you click a mouse uh, a mouse button, an event is sent by the operating system to uh, to the application. And that's the details of that event is what we get inside here. Uh, so we get which, bu which button was clicked, we get the, the state of that button pressed or released, um, and we get some modified states. So maybe you shift clicked or control clicked or alt clicked or whatever. So here we do, uh, let's see. So we check if it was a left, middle or right click button. Now there are some uh, still some open issues in terms of well there are actually multiple types of mouse button clicks you could do so maybe they, these you have the side buttons and you have the I don't know there are multiple middle middle buttons on some mouses so yeah so but for now we just have left middle right and so we set the uh, the context of the application we set the mouse uh, state the left button state to the middle button state and the right button state. So, for example, if I click with the left with the left button with the left mouse button, and then if I hold the mouse, now the state will be uh, pressed. And now, if I also click the right button, now the right button state will also be pressed. Now you're not seeing this here, but that's what happens behind the scenes. So that's why we keep track of the state for each uh, button. Um, so this for now we'll leave this as is. So we need to start with um with this with this if condition here because in the else state we actually do the matching on the pressed or released now let's see what happens why do we have this if else skip normal mouse event if the message bar has been clicked hmm. The message bar, right? So I guess the message bar is just the top bar of the uh, of the application. So in that case, we apparently just ignore the click. Or message bar click, or we can quickly see what it does. Handle clicks on the message bar, right? And so here we 
we too have this press and release state. So I am wondering I'm wondering if that's, is that the message bar? I'm not even sure what the message bar is. Message bar. So if it's pressed. Yeah, interesting. I'm not quite sure. Message at point. Return the message bars message if there is some at a specified point. Yeah, I don't I I wonder, I don't think message bar is actually the stop bar. It doesn't really matter for now for us, but I I do wonder what it is. Terminal. Well, we'll ignore it for now. But I do wonder if it really requires a uh, this if else. We'll leave it in for now. But it feels like this could also be part. I'm not sure. Um, because it doesn't really check for the left or mouse button, it just works for all mouse button clicks, apparently. So that's obviously a reason to do it here. Um, but yeah, let's leave it as is. So instead of this state, so this is what we're going to change. So instead of this part here, we want to actually match on the um, on something that represents the type of button you click. So basically this one here. Um, oh, actually, we need to we want to check for so there are three states that we need to check first of all which button you clicked then if it's a single double or triple click and then if the if the current state is pressed or released and so the question is the question is in, in which ordering do we want to do them Well, there was some feedback on this on the pull request so let's see what Chris Dewar one of the uh, uh, Christian Dewar one of the uh, main contributors to the project uh, mentioned something about this using the current function as single press function seems fine to me then we can just extract on mouse double click and on mouse triple click functions into the mouse input function so we split single double trigger click first and then by press release right but then of course we still have the which mouse you click but we can we can just pass that in and then in the press and release you you actually check that does that make sense so let's see um We've got the on mouse press. And so here too, we don't know the button yet, uh, or at least this function is called for all the button presses. And so then let's see where we, So here we check if the yeah if the current button press 
is the same as the last button that, that was pressed. So if you left click the click the left mouse button and then quickly after that click the left mouse button again, it's a double click. But if you click the right mouse button again quickly, it's not. But we don't yeah, so so we don't actually check. So we, uh, I, I, a click or double click or triple click can be either the left or the right mouse button or an, actually any mouse button. There's no explicit check that it's only the left button that does this. So on a deeper level, you actually start to check. Like there's a triple click. It's triple right mouse button click. Does the, what is this? Um, what is this bound to? Right. So in that case, it makes sense to um, to start off with this part here so this is something we want to know so we check this click state and let's see mm. Now I think it might make sense actually to, to set the click state first and then to do something with the click state. We are going to do some refactoring here, so we'll see how this turns out, but we'll we'll start. So we'll start with so we don't need a point here yet. We also aren't interested in the. Uh, are we interested in the state of the button here? We set the click state here, and we check the current click state. But this is the button state, not the click state. Right, so we're also not particularly interested in the button state here, for now at least. So we could we could start by doing it here actually. <laughs> so when we get a mouse input, we first set the state of the um, of the mouse input, and so the, and that is the click state of the mouse input. So this variable is something that we're going to set. So we've got mouse mute and mouse. And so what we can start with here is, uh, let's see. What is the best API for this? We could just do a function here that determines the, the click state and then returns it. Or we could just do a function that mutates click state. So then we would have something like uh, Update click state. We'll go with this for now. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what works. Because we've we've got self here, so we have we have access to all this data. Now another thing we could do is. Hmm, well. We could just have a function that says click state and it just computes the click state at the moment that you call it. Um, but we'll do we'll do it. Um, first of all, I don't think we need to make this public for now. We'll see. Um, 
And so here we want to um, do self dot. No, we just want to do this part. And basically, what we want is this this whole um, C. Or is it this part, or at least part of it? Let's see. So where does this end? Right. So this sets the click state to click, and we'll remove all all the stuff in between for now, because that's something we're not interested in. Um, but let's see. So. So yeah, so we do some stuff here, we do some validating. And then we set the click state. Also remove this part. And so if the click state We've got none, click, double, and triple, right? So we can set this to uh, none. Move it up here. So if there is no click state known yet, we set it to click. If it's already at click, then we check if the same button was clicked within the double click threshold, which means it's now a double click click state. Uh, and if it's double click, you can go to triple click. Right. And so now we do still need the um, um, the information that tells you if it was actually uh, if we actually if the button was changed. So that's something that we can get from here as well. So we'll use this for now, oh, and then we'll see if that's enough. So we take the, the current time, we check how long since the last time uh, a click occurred, then we uh, update the last click timestamp, right? So I, and I'm also, I'm also wondering if we should do that here actually. Let's move it out for now. We'll see. We'll see where we end up with it. Um, right. So this can also be down here. This can be gone. So we'll check the elapsed value. Then we'll check the button changed. And now button is something that. Okay, so we do need that information. And that's a mouse button. That's not what I wanted. Um, mouse button. So we check if it has, if it's changed. This is uh, mute, uh, yeah, mute self. And then let's see. Right, this is click state none. Right. 
And so if the button hasn't changed, I'm guessing if the button changed, do we do we ever want to to get in here? Um, what is the mouse button? I think it's even right. Alright, so it implements a gluten mouse button. So then we would have to figure out because if the mouse button has changed at all, then probably still want to go from none to click in that case. So it is for the other two that we actually want to uh, skip, uh, skip doing any changes. So we'll leave it in for now here. I don't think we can move this up for now. Uh, which are we missing? Triple click. Right, we don't have triple click, so we'll uh, add it. We could just um, do a non exhaustive pattern. Exhaustive pattern match, but I feel like it makes sense to add this one here. <coughs> that way we've covered them all, and we're not doing anything with cri uh, a triple click because there is no uh, quadruple click. So let's see. Yeah, so this should work. Um, that, right. We need. We do need to return something here. Mm, and what happens after you click? Well, on the other one, it was that you would get a. Uh, actually, right. So if if there is a click, it would end up a double click, double click, triple click, and then anything else would end up in a click. So that means that a triple and uh, an extra click after a triple click would end up with um, with just a click and so we can move this down here uh, I'm not sure what I think it's something like this right uh, triple click so this way we've covered all of them. Click and double click, not covered. Why not? Click states. All right, because we, we have this if condition here, so there's still, right. So it somewhat makes sense to then just match them all. Uh, the downside is that you would, if something changed in the, in the click state enum, you wouldn't predict, you wouldn't be notified of something that needed to change here. So, yeah, I guess we'll just do this for now then because that's also what was already implemented. Well, actually, let's let's just do the uh, uh, click state. We'll do it like this for now. Click and click state. Double click. And um, if they wanted to change, I will change it. Uh, but I think it's a bit more clearer now what happens in what situation instead of just having a catch-all uh, block. 
All right, so this is where we actually set the click state. So that's something that we've tackled uh, here now. Then we set the, um, we updated the last click timestamp. And I wonder if we should update it here or if we should update it. Uh, where do we use it? So, yes, we use it here. This is something that we've just fixed, so we don't need to use it here anymore. We use it here. And this is also something that we use now, so we don't need to fix it anymore. Update. All right, so it looks like we're only using it in the update click state, actually. Still, though, you might use it somewhere else, and so I'm... Um, And it's not really the last click click timestamp, it's actually the previous click timestamp. The last one is the one that you that you click just now. At least that's how I interpret it. Um, but okay, so we'll leave that for now. But we can move this to the bottom of this implementation and say right at the end we update the click timestamp. Because we still might be using it somewhere around here. Uh, now the Downside is that obviously, um, well, we could just we could set now up here. Could something like uh, click timestamp is instant now, and then here we set the um, the value to click timestamp, and it's, it's similar actually to. Um, so how we how button is actually updated at the end of the function. All right. So then the next step is let's see. So this part can be actually can be removed. This is the old implementation, and then this is something that we already had. So we're going to have to change that. So now that we update the click state. We've got the button here, um, which sets the button state. And we set a point. And do we use this somewhere else? Right, so we pass it into the on mouse press and to the on mouse release. Right, makes sense. And this is the thing that we added ourselves in the previous um, video. And this is what we're going to change now. Okay, so the next step is to swap this around. And instead of doing the pressed release, we're going to do the, uh, we're going to actually use the state of the button to do something. So what we could do here is we could say, the, um, so we could say, let's see, uh, self context click state and so let's see if it's your first click then you do something like uh, self on mouse click and we pass in the button that you clicked and we pass in the, uh, the state which is pressed or released and the point and then similarly click state uh, double click basically uh, we do the same except for a different function so we'll say uh, this and then and this will become the uh, on well, double click and we already have this function so
I'm just the almost triple click. And then uh, let's see. So now we can do the actual implementation in these functions. This can be removed, although we, we, it's uncommon because we do need it later. And so this becomes this becomes much simpler now. And this needs to be color like this. Okay, so now we need to move the on mouse clicks and the on mouse triple click. And what we did here is we did the we had the on mouse press and the on mouse release. So we do need to what is the uh, process mouse bindings? Let's see, attempts to find a binding and execute this action. Provided mode mods and key must match what is allowed by a binding. Right. So this is what allows you to configure certain actions to do certain. Uh, to trigger certain events. So it takes the modifier state and takes the button. Now this was uh, executed on pressed. Interesting thing is it doesn't take into account the um, click state. As far as I can see. <clears throat> so where do we need to execute it in all of the clicks? Make sure that we're not missing anything. Binding and mouse bindings is triggered by. mouse bindings okay so we'll move it to the for now at least we'll uh, we'll move to the click uh, on mouse click and we'll put it in the uh, the pressed state and we'll see how that works so we do need the, we need an on mouse click function of course so we'll say fn on mouse click Click that is, and it takes a button, which is the mouse button. It takes a state, which is the uh, element state, and it takes a point, which is I don't know, a point or something. And we could, and then we can do a. Um, a match on the state and so you've got the press and the release and so the on mouse press implementation will probably just end up in this in this on mouse click uh, otherwise you would get on mouse click underscore press on mouse click underscore release and I don't think it makes a lot of sense to split that up even further um, so this will be uh, this will be changed and this will become Something else will end up um, in here. All right. 
So let's see what, um, and so we, we do select the modifiers here and we don't pass them in. So I think we need, we should pass them in as well. Yeah, so we've got the button, the state, the point, and then finally we'll set the modifiers. And we'll do the same for, uh, for here and here. And so then this will have modifiers. this and now point is not not exactly correct so what is it um, is it an option point I guess it is all right so it's an option point all right That's this one, and this is also a um, mute self. Not sure if it's a mutable self. Um, let's see if we can get away with just making it uh, an immutable self, which also makes it explicit that these uh, functions do something with the state. Uh, but don't predict, don't change the state itself. Now I'm not sure if we can get it away with that, but we'll see. So let's see what on mouse press does. It does a lot actually, but a lot of this can also now be removed. So if you were to, we'll just copy this whole implementation for now, and then we'll go to um, removing what we don't need. So this just, this would would go here. Now, for example, if all goes well, we don't need this, we don't need this, we don't need to check this changed. Um, this one is interesting. Because I feel like for now we, we do need to do this uh, here. So we'll do that for now. We'll see if we uh, if that needs to change. And so this um, right. So we already know it's the state of the click here. It is it's a single click. And so actually, if we look at the implementation here, which is this part, the click. Well, actually, that's not entirely true. It's, so it's either this part, which is a click, or it's this part, which is um, no. Actually, this is a this is what happens when you double click, right? So let me just quickly back up what I just changed because this block URL launcher is in the in the double click and not in the in the single click. It's in the double and the triple click, that's what I meant. So in case of the double click... Yeah, okay, but it's, it's correct up here because the if condition is here as well, right? So this is correct, but in this case, in the on in the on mouse click, we are actually interested in this part here. So what happens here? And this basically happens on all the implementations, so we'll have to see how that goes. So let's just say that we remove all this. Now some of this can can still, for example, this part can be gone. Some of it can still be moved to this um, this implementation here. So if you were to For example, this part, uh, no, not this one, but this one. Clear selection is something we want to do there as well. Well, actually, that's that's the question, right? This only sets the click state. So it shouldn't really do anything with the 
um, with changing selections and stuff like that. And even this part here is uh, it's probably not something you want to do here. So this actually And so this is something that you actually want to do on all the both press and release because that's what what originally happened, right? Um, is that true? No, that's not true. You only want to do this on press. So it actually makes sense to keep this here, and it actually makes sense also to. The problem is then this ha does have to become mutable the uh, itself, but I guess for now that's fine. In order to keep this on point in the sense that it only updates click state and doesn't actually change anything else and that would mean that we would have to move this into several locations uh, several functions so in the on mouse double click and the on mouse triple click we would actually uh, do this so we'll remove it here for now um, we'll just add a Move to on um, mouse double click and the same goes for uh, this one. This goes to the uh, triple click. What do we add later? So now we have the mouse process binding which happens and then we also do these parts. Um, Right, because on mouse click, that's where you want to do, when you press, you want to do a starting a new selection. That makes sense. So we can leave this as is for now. Let's see what it complains about. If I check this one, can be gone. We don't do the on mouse press. That's what, we, what we're doing above. So this should still do what we expect it to do now. We might move some things around here later if we think that makes sense, but for now this is fine. And so we and we also have the on mouse release. And so what does this do? And so this runs on all the Whenever you release the mouse, doesn't matter if it's a single, double, triple click, this just happens. If I get that right. So for now, we're just going to move this, um, this as well to, uh, let's see, to here. This is fine for now. By the way, there might be some noise from outside. I have my window open. It's just the weather is so nice that I didn't really want to close the window. So I hope everything is still audible. I tested it, so it should be, but um, yeah. I hope you can manage uh, because uh, I really wanted to get some fresh air. Uh, let's see. Now, I am wondering if we have to do this on all the um, on all the uh, clicks and releases, then we probably want to uh, factor this out into some kind of function or multiple functions that do some some specific action that we run on multiple occasions. Um, what we can do for now, at least, is to just quickly validate. If you go to the input, and we'll just say uh, on mouse click. Uh, no, actually, on Mars Press. So this is the one that we took. Let's see where it's actually used right now. Yeah, so it is. So the mouse input, and so it it does trigger. Let's see. The stuff that we copied triggers whenever you don't change. 
you don't transition from one click state to another. Yeah. Right. And so that's something that we are lacking right now because we don't know if the if a particular click event changed the click state. We just know what the click state is after a, a click event because that's what we uh, that's what we update in the uh, um, what is it the uh, on mouse uh, mouse input because we get an input then we update the click state and then we do something with that click state the information that's lost at this point is if there was actually a change in click state because of this input because that's something that we don't particularly that's something we don't record here we just set the new click state. So we could, one way to tackle this is, is to actually keep track of did, did the click state change? Uh, keep a global track on if it, if it changed. And then we can use that information to, um, and probably you want to then have something like what was the previous click state before this mouse click? Because, Yes, actually the, the click state always changes, except if you click slowly, do a single click slowly. That's when it, it just always stays the same. It stays in the click state, in the click click state. And if you if you um, if you click twice, so now if I click again, it goes back to click uh, to the click click state. <laughs> And then if you click twice, it goes to the click, uh, the double click click state. And it, yeah, so it does. So it doesn't go from double click to triple. Well, no. So if I double click and then I triple click again, it goes back to click, then double click and then triple click. But you can see it, uh, Clear the selection, then do the double click selection, and then do the triple click selection. So clear, double, triple, right? <clears throat> and so it doesn't make sense. So in order for us to do this part here, we do need to know if the click state changed. I feel like. Because we go from a click state to a double click here, but we, then we don't execute this. This is in this is in an extra conditional, so or in the last uh, matching arm, and so once this is finished, it doesn't go to this one. It just ignores it. So if you change the click state, it never executes this part of the code. It only executes it if you didn't change the click state from click to double or from double to triple. So knowing the previous click state, and I guess there is some precedence there to know the previous click state to do these kind of things, because we do have the last button and the last uh, click timestamp. So we could, for example, say, um, and that's something that we would have to do in the update click state. So we would say something like self context dot mouse mute last click states 
is, and then you would get this part, something like this. Discrete mouse. We could move this. Click state equals this one. And this also becomes um, something like this. And this is something we don't have right now, obviously. So we need to figure out where is the Context That's right, so we've got the little, the little click state and the last click state Which is also a click state And so we'll set this to To none as well Usage field. Well, we added it, so it should be now. Um, let's see. And are we? Do we have any tests that validate this? Apparently not. Doesn't look like there are tests in this. We'll have to look into that later. But now we have a last click say that we can update, so that's that's nice. Uh, let's see. So then we can use this information down here. So what we want to know here is um, if self dot um, context mouse click state. Um, this is still not enough is it because we now know if the click state changed but this also changes the click state It just goes from none or double or triple, triple to click. Uh, and in the old situation, this triggered on all the um, all the other click click state changes. So in in a sense, it is enough because we we can validate that the, that the state didn't go from click to double or from double to triple. Gets a bit hairy though, but let's see where it brings us. Um, so if the let's see, what do we want to know in our conditional? We want to know if we went from click to double. So if the previous, the last click state was click, and the current is double or the last was double and the current is triple, then we don't want to execute this. Uh, click state, let's just... self context mouse click state. We'll do the same for the last click state. And then we'll say if um, so, if the 
click state. If the last click state was equal to um, click state uh, click. And the click state was equal to click state double click. And the Last click state it's equal to click state, uh, double click, and the click state is all right. This is very messy, so we'll see where we'll, <coughs> where we'll end up here. For now, let's just <coughs> see where we go. So if this is the case, then we actually want to execute this part of the code. We could do some, uh, we could do a matching here as well. Why is it complaining? Oh, it doesn't have, it. you can't. Seems to me that it derive um, equal and partial equal. I think it makes sense. But we could we could obviously also do some kind of matching here. So if we match on the click state. <coughs> and we are interested in uh click state double click or click state triple click and all the other ones uh, we don't care about and then we can do another match Not sure if this is better than the other one. Uh, actually, we don't need to do a match here. What we could do is we could do an, an if statement here. It's not equal to click state click. And uh, ask click state. It's not equal to click state. Double click. Not sure if this because now you go. Can you go from double click to no? It's not possible. You can't go from double to double click. So let's see if this makes things a bit better. I'm not sure if it does. Um, but then we would end up. Actually, no. So then we don't need this one. And do we need this one? I don't think so, right? You would think you would need equal or partial equal to do matching, pattern matching. But apparently you don't. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cut in here. Um, I'm going to keep recording, but just to, keep, just to uh, split up the episode into a couple of episodes um we'll wrap this one up here let's see what is going on here all right I, i'm still doing the uh, checking there so we do need to derive there so 
I'm going to continue working on this and I will continue recording, but um, I will split up the episodes so that you can I don't know, stop watching this one, do something else and watch the other one later. Um, so um, yeah, so I will see you in the next one.